Today let's talk about designing a basic crystal radio. And yeah, so you decide you want to do that. Uh, maybe you want to build a smaller one like a rocket radio. Maybe you want more range for contesting. Maybe you want to try hybridizing things, capacitor, inductor, all that type of stuff, or just start from scratch and uh, kind of give it a whirl. Okay, so let's cover the most basic aspects of designing a radio and uh, help you get started down that path. Okay, these radios have six basic components, coil, diode detector, wiper or capacitor for tuning, so we can look over here and see those. Here is the uh, detector, so uh, here is the coil on a wiper type, antenna, ground, here's that diode again, and then an earphone. Okay, so these are all the components over here. We're going to talk primarily about these first three up here, the coil, diode detector, and the wiper capacitor for tuning. The rest of these things, uh, the antenna and the ground and all that, are pretty much off the shelf. They don't change much between types of radios. Okay, so the basic crystal radio types include a variable inductor, which is the wiper. So that's this one right here. And it includes the fixed inductor with a variable capacitor. So we have a fixed coil here. And then we have our variable capacitor there. When you take a variable inductor plus a variable capacitor, so that's the wiper and variable capacitor, it's not basic. So we're not going to cover that today. Yeah, that's uh, the math on that's pretty significant. So we'll save that for another day. Uh, then there's the uh, mixed. So you have exchangeable fixed coils with a variable capacitor. In early radios, it was very common to have several coils that you could interchange. They had uh, plug-ins, and so you plug in a coil of a certain size, and then you change the capacitor, and then when you exceeded that uh, coil's range, you'd plug in a different coil and uh, tune the capacitor, and you keep doing that. Yeah, in fact, in theory, you can have an AM and a shortwave radio in one set. So, uh, But again, that's something that's not basic, so we'll save that for another day. Okay, so let's get started with this design. Uh, first, we need a, a resonant circuit, so I'm going to call that an RC, and it has to tune from between 535 kilohertz to somewhere up about 1605 kilohertz, and that's the AM band in the U.S. Some countries, it's, yeah, it's a little bit higher and a little bit lower, but yeah, this is basically it. A resonant circuit consists of inductance, capacitance, and resistance, so it looks like this. In a lot of them, the resistance will not be obvious. It'll just be part of the uh, part of the circuit because, for example, in an inductor this long, a long piece of wire has resistance. So we have to uh, consider that. Okay, uh, the crystal radio resonant circuit uses inductance, capacitance, and, like I said, leftover resistance. And the all electronic components have these three traits. You're not going to get away from it. And inductor is the worst because it has significant levels of resistance uh, and capacitance on top of the inductance. Wiper radios like this one, they use straight capacitance. We'll talk about that next in a second. But here's an important note. The more inductance you have and the more capacitance, the lower the frequency. So when you want to get down here to like 535 kilohertz, it requires more capacitance and more inductance. And when you want to go to the higher frequencies, you have to get rid of that. And that is why high frequencies are difficult, because you have all this unintended capacitance, inductance, and whatever, just in the wiring of a radio. And yeah, that's why it took uh, scientists and, and experimenters a long time to get up to higher frequencies. So let's talk more about that straight capacitance. It is unwanted capacitance. So it's not like a capacitor, it is something that, yeah, it's just happening because uh, coils have straight capacitance, and let's talk about why that is. In the DC universe, a capacitor is two conductors separated by an insulator. So that's, the symbol over here is very good because it shows that. We have an air gap, which is a good insulator, and we have two conductors like this, and the charge builds up on one side, and that's it. So you have minus on one side, plus on the other. But in the real world, which includes AC, uh, capacitance is anywhere there is higher and lower voltage in close proximity. If we look at this wave over here, so this is our AM wave coming in. At 1 megahertz, it is about 300 meters, or about 983 feet. 
So that wave is very long. And yeah, I know we always see them looking like this, but in fact, if you looked at it and stretched it out, it would look more like this. So it would be one little tiny portion of this wave would look like that. The crystal radio coil is about 18 centimeters or seven inches long. So the coil sees the wave as just kind of a flat line that's been tipped up a little bit. So here, if we look at this, we have the voltage is rising in this, uh, in this particular case. Uh, and what happens is, if you look at every one of these uh, turns of wire, you will see that the voltage is increasing a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And so what a capacitor is, again, it is just a voltage that is separated, okay? So we have a potential in this turn, which is slightly different than this turn, which is slightly different than that turn, and so on, and so on, and so on. And when you add all these up, you end up with capacitance. So in every coil, transformer, inductors, whatever, the voltage between one winding and the next is different. So you get capacitance. Uh, one winding is going to be higher. The next one's going to be lower. You're going to end up with straight capacitance. It acts like a leaky capacitor. So yeah, you say, well, it's shorted out. But yeah, it's shorted out. But at higher frequencies, uh, it's not that shorted because of the amount of time it takes for the wave to pass through here. It still looks like the, uh, from one turn to the next, it still looks like a capacitor to the, uh, to the radio. Okay, so for example, we have an air coil that's 50 millimeters in diameter, 150 millimeters long. It has 3.05 picofarads of capacitance, and you say that that's not very much, but a typical uh, air capacitor runs between 13 picofarads and 365 picofarads. So at the low end, three picofarads is very significant. So what is that? One, one fourth of that roughly. So how do we get a resonant circuit that varies from 535 to 1605 kilohertz? Well, in a wiper tuned radio, we're going to start with a higher inductance. Remember what we said that more inductance is lower frequency. So we're going to start with that. Uh, the less inductance, higher resonant frequency. So that's what this tuner rod is doing. The wiper over here selects how much inductance is in the resonating part of the part of the coil. So the antenna connects here and the signal travels down the coil until it hits the wiper and then it comes down the wiper and out the ground. As this moves this way, there's less and less coil, which as we said earlier, less inductance means higher frequency. So this is counterintuitive to me. I don't know about you, but it, it, it seems counterintuitive. So I had to get out my transistor radio and actually check this to make sure that this was the low end and this is the high end of the frequency. Having said that, let's move along. Okay, the wiper selects how much inductance is in the resonating section. So yeah, this way, the resonating section is here. And as you can see, that's maximum coil. So that's 535 kilohertz. In the other end, it would be at the 1605. So totally shorted. So when the, when the uh, signal comes in here, actually comes in here, comes up this way, and then immediately goes to ground because the wiper is over on this side. That is the 1605. Let's look at a capacitor tuned radio. How do we get resonant circuit that varies from 535? Okay, it's the same question for the capacitor tuned radio. Uh, we start with just enough inductance to reach 1605. So this one we're, gonna, we're going at it backwards we're starting at the high end. So that's the least amount of inductance. And then we're going to add capacitance back to the lower resonant to get the 535 kilohertz. So uh, the coil is lower inductance compared to a wiper radio. Yes, we're starting out with less inductance. A small fixed inductance, which is what we're starting with again, and plus more capacitance gives lower resonant frequency. Okay, so you have to kind of keep that in mind. More inductance, more capacitance, lower frequency. Yes, it's kind of the opposite. So for example, if we start out with 365 picofarads, which is about the maximum of one of these capacitors over here, and we add in the 535 microhenries of a typical inductor like this, we end up with a resonant frequency of about 360 kilohertz. It's lower than our target, but that's okay. We can be lower, but we, we don't want to be above the bottom end target frequency. Otherwise, yeah, we won't get those 
that we won't be able to tune down there. Small fixed inductance plus less capacitance means higher resonant frequency. So that moves us up to the high end of the band. So if we start out with 16 picofarads, that was the three picofarads we talked about plus the 13 of the, of the uh, capacitor plus the 535, we get 1720 kilohertz. It's high, it's outside the range, but again, we're okay. We, we're bounded outside the range. You're gonna have some quiet space on each end, but that's okay. Uh, so to summarize the overall strategy, we start with a lower fixed inductance than we would with a wiper and we add back capacitance. Okay, since all devices have inductance, capacitance, resistance, we can squeeze out unwanted capacitance when necessary. And one of those is, for example, an antenna that's higher above the ground has lower capacitance. Yeah, I know antennas have capacitance and inductance too, but that's, again, a whole other chapter. And coils, if you want lower capacitance, litz wire is good. And there's some, several other things which uh, are better left to another video. So we're going to use an air coil in our designs because, well, first of all, it's easiest to size. There's online calculators that are very simple to use. You plug in the tube size and the diameter of the wire and the uh, amount of inductance you want, and it tells you the rest. It's easiest to construct. Yeah, it's a piece of plastic pipe and, a, and some wire and you wrap it around there. It is the most efficient. It has the least amount of electrical loss. Um, I've used ceramic things and ceramic cores and boy, I just can't get them to work right. Um, it's the cheapest. You can make it from scraps. I mean, this is where I get all my stuff is, you know, you can go to a work site or whatever and get a piece of plastic left over and whatever. Yeah, the downsides, the con. Yeah, the core is gonna be bigger than say a ferrite rod, but again, a lot more efficient. Okay, so uh, some notes here. I have videos, I'm gonna put them in the description on coil design and construction, so we won't go into terrible detail. And we're gonna ignore the other types as not being basic, so like ferrite and whatever, yeah. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is choose your type of tuning. And you say, uh, well, how do I do that? Well, you start out with uh, the choices wiper, the Pro is wide range of designs. It is the cheapest. Yeah, it's just a piece of wire. Common materials and good sensitivity is the result. The con, well, the tuning is clumsier because you get to move this back and forth and you got to get it on top of the windings. So yeah, and there's less selectivity. That means that if you have a really loud station like I do in my area, it can uh, talk over some of the quieter stations. The capacitor style of tuning, the Pro is simple tuning. You just turn the knob down here. It has good selectivity, which means you don't get to talk over from louder stations, and it uses off-the-shelf parts for, for most things. The con, the designing is trickier, and good designs are very limited. I, I've only got one design that I like, and that's this one here. They're expensive because of that variable capacitor, and there's less sensitivity. Next, we choose our antenna circuit, and the antenna circuit is actually part of the radio. It's not the antenna, it's not the piece of wire going out there. Yes, they're all integrated together, but again, that's a higher level thing. But uh, the antenna circuit, for example, in this radio, it is the first 20 windings right there is the circuit, and then it comes back here to the ground. In this one, the antenna circuit, the whole radio is the antenna circuit. And in this one, the antenna circuit is just this left side of it. Okay, so there's different types. Uh, there's tightly coupled, and that is this one right here, where the coil is basically the whole thing. I mean, it's the antenna goes through here, the signal passes through here, it's all one piece. The pro is it's the simplest way to do things. It has more sensitivity. The clarity can be very good, and it can actually work without a ground. So the con, less selectivity. It can be overwhelmed more easily by a loud station in the neighborhood. There's loosely coupled, so that is this style we looked at. And that is where the antenna coil right here is completely separate from the, from the tuning coil. So this side, you're tuning the antenna. The antenna comes in here, goes through this coil, goes through the wiper and then out the ground. So these two coils, left and right side, are not connected, they're separate. So this is called loosely coupled. And the 
Pro is good clarity, easier to achieve. Yeah, so yeah, this one will produce a, a clear a clear output. It has better selectivity. So yeah, you don't get the over talking from loud stations as much, but you have to have a ground. It will not work without a ground. The con, less simple. Yeah, you gotta have two coils, two wipers. Less uh, sensitivity. Yeah, it's slightly less sensitive than, than this design. And there are no simple calculators for doing the side of the, uh, of the side of the coil, the antenna match coil. And then there's something in between here where again, the first 20 windings here are for the antenna and the rest of it is for the headphone and the uh, actual RC circuit. And they're all connected together. So it's a hybrid between this and this. The next thing is to choose the detector. And the first choice is the mineral. So you can have like galena or iron pyrite. And some examples are over here. This is iron pyrite. The pro is it's more authentic. I mean, it has a cool factor. If you're going to uh, build a crystal radio and you want to be totally authentic, yeah, okay. That's how you do it. It can be easy to procure. Uh, in my hometown when I was a kid, finding iron pyrite and galena was, was nothing. The con, it may cost more because if you have to buy the minerals like I did last time, yeah, they weren't cheap. It requires a little bit more skill to use, yeah, so you have to be able to select your spot on the, on the uh, mineral. It is subject to vibration. If you bump something while it's operating, it'll come loose and it'll stop and you have to reselect your hot spot on the crystal again. And of course it adds to construction. The other choice is a diode, the 1N34A or the D9K. Uh, the pros, it works every time. There is no skill involved. Uh, once it's in place, it's in place. It's vibration proof. It's probably not coming out. There's no additional construction once it's done. The con is these things are becoming harder and harder to find, these two diodes. Uh, cost is increasing and it just lacks the cool factor. So now what? What's the next step? Well, you use this information to decide what type of radio you want to build. Uh, you can use my videos on building different parts and types as your starting point. You can substitute your own numbers, your, your changes. You can run the numbers for your own coil and you can build, test, and modify as needed. So there you have it, your own custom-made bespoke crystal radio built to your specs. And you can tweak that to perfection and that's part of the fun of it. Done. You've now completed Crystal Radio Design 101. Good luck. Go out and have some fun.